All right. <clears throat> really exciting to be out there, um, you know, after these guys did a really good job from what we were around or what we heard from the summer. And, you know, even though working with them in the spring and then the summer, there's some guys specifically back from um, some injuries that really made today even more exciting to have the majority of the players out there and to be able to see them together and and start trying to figure out where all these pieces are going to fit and how they do. So spent a lot of time talking to them in the first meeting about <clears throat> outside expectations, hype, and accolades and those things and how little those mean. This team hasn't won any games, they haven't played together, and even players that have had previous previous success here or other places, that doesn't mean anything either. So um, just making sure that they understand whether it's preseason rankings, whether it's as a team, position group, individuals, how that means nothing. And those can always be exact opposite a lot of times uh, from what happens by the end of the year. So we got a lot of work to do, uh, but at the same time, it's exciting to have a lot of pieces to work with and to try to gel them together. So um, good first day, and and we're still watching the film right now, but uh, a lot of exciting stuff. And a, a lot was made of the talent athleticism you guys brought on on, on the defensive front with Princely and, and Walter, but you guys obviously brought in uh, some linemen, uh, offensive linemen as well. Do you think that the offensive linemen you brought in can have the same sort of impact that you're expecting from guys like Walter and Princely? I hope so. I think that <clears throat> maybe, you know, you guys would be able to see as much as anybody because – I kind of see these guys every day, so sometimes you don't see change as much when you see them every day versus you guys coming out today and seeing all the pieces out there. <clears throat> Again, doesn't mean we're going to be any good. But we do, for the first time since I've been here, look like a real team, you know, when you when you even in walkthrough. And, again, that doesn't mean we're going to be any good. It just means that we actually have length and size, like, you know, Really good teams do. And so, again, we got a lot of pieces to do. There's all kinds of work to do with that. That doesn't mean you're going to be any good. you got to get them to play together. you got to get them to play individually as well as they can and <clears throat> also to figure out what their roles are. But I do think uh, we look a lot different, and people mention that a lot on defense, but we do look longer and more uh, improved on the offensive line also. I want to ask you specifically about Henry Parrish. You know, ever since him coming back and reuniting with you and Kevin Smith, how is he different as a player now than when he was when he first arrived here and was here in 2020, 2021? Um, yeah, we haven't had a ton of work with him, you know, not being here uh, spring, so uh, – and really haven't done anything in pads yet with him. So – but <clears throat> we've obviously known him for a long time. Um, I think physically um, he doesn't look a ton different. You know, it's not something that looks – you know, 20 pounds different or something. But I think that <clears throat> he's played a lot of football and, you know, um, understands our system, but understands football really well and has really good football intelligence. Coach, uh, condolences about your father. Um, Kevin, first time here, had a kind of a three-headed monster, Ely and Connor and – Parrish, do you anticipate that kind of look this year with Bentley and Amos and Parrish? Yeah, I don't know. And <clears throat> I hope this doesn't sound – thanks for saying that about my dad first. But – and I don't – I hope this doesn't sound wrong. I don't really care which way it goes, whether it's one guy is so far ahead that one guy does it or there's two or there's three. Um, because we'll just figure out the best way to win. And so you've been around us for a while to know, like, we really don't have a script of, like, this is exactly how it's supposed to look offensively, defensively, rotations of players. And our, our systems look different year in and year out based off of our players, let alone how many play at a spot. So 
Um, I don't have that answer for you. Um, I think maybe on paper it would look more like that because there are a number of guys that have played but not necessarily been, you know, the high carry starter. So um, I don't know that, and I really don't worry that much which way it is. We'll just figure out however it figured itself out. Lena, what kind of step forward are you hoping that Santaron Perkins kind of takes this year, and do you see his role maybe like evolving with this defense this season? Yeah, I think that a lot of times these guys between their first and second year, even in the NFL, is the big jump, and hopefully with him it is. Um, that was a lot on him last year to go in and play, and he flashed and made some really good plays in some games. But that's a really hard spot to play. You know, are you – you know, are you walking out playing some outside backer, but then you got to play defensive end? And so um, I think he's had a really good offseason. He's really exciting player, as talented as that we have. So um, I think he'll put it together and have a great year. Lane, with Walter Nolan only being 70 miles from here, has he expressed any enthusiasm to, you know, being so close to home and playing? And what do you think or how do you think he will succeed this year? Well, Walter's not a big express enthusiasm guy, but so he didn't say anything about that. Um, Walter's pretty low key cool, you know, if you if you know him very well. So, um, but he practiced great today. We've we've had, um, you know, great experience with Walter and and buying in and doing things that we want to on and off the field. So um, I, I think that. You know, again, one practice, but he's headed the right direction. Hi, Coach. Uh, just talking about the defense, ranked about 70th in the country in, in total defense last year. Just what kind of emphasis are you putting on that kind of going into this season? And, and secondly, not a lot of returners on the secondary. Just how do you think that area is kind of shaping up? Well, I think <clears> – I don't know what average per play is defensively. I hope it's probably better than that. And that's – that to me is more important. I think when I bet that's probably off of total yards, that can cannot <clears throat> be a great definition of your defense, especially when you're a tempo offense because you play more snaps on defense. So, um, but the secondary is like a number of positions that you know we go to the portal and we fill guys in. So even though on paper maybe there aren't a lot of returning starts, um, especially at corner, you know there are guys that have started other places that we're really excited about. Coach, with all the guys that transferred in over this past offseason, just what are your initial thoughts on just all of them collectively as a group, gelling with the guys who were on last year's team? Just what are your initial thoughts on them from this past offseason and how they're gelling together? I think they've done really well. I think that we researched that a lot, um, you know, over in recruiting in general, but especially in the portal. I think that we've really <clears> – <throat> valued heavily in our evaluation who they are and how are they going to fit versus just here's the player because <clears throat> if you study around the country that doesn't always work just because you sign high portal classes doesn't mean that you win um, because to me it's got to be the right eval and the right makeup to come in and, and or else it doesn't work because a lot of these guys leave places because they're going to a place feeling like they're going to be the big role player and then when it doesn't work, you know, you've seen around the country, in my opinion, how that cannot work. So <clears throat> I think we've put a lot into that. I think we've got the right guys that way. And now we just got to put them all together. We'll take questions down low. Lane, you made the comment following the loss against Georgia that you weren't where you wanted to be from a roster standpoint. Now that we stand here today, right before the season, where do you feel like you are from a roster standpoint? Can you answer some of those questions? I think we answered a lot of those questions. I think that, like I said, again, don't mean we're going to win games, but if when you go out there and watch us, we look more like, um, I just said, like what Alabama and Georgia have looked like over the last four years when we go warm up against them. So, <clears throat> again, that doesn't mean we're going to win, but if you don't have length, you are going to struggle at times. And to me, it's very hard to go a whole year and play really well every week and everything if you're playing undersized. That, that, that gets you at times in some games. And we've seen that over our career here to me 
where there's been certain games that that has showed it up, showed up. So we got a chance. Lane, I guess with adding all, all of those guys, um, I guess at, at this point in the year, do you feel like maybe you're, you're still trying to figure out your, your best guy at certain spots where maybe you'd have a better idea in previous years where you ha haven't added all of these older transfer portal guys? Yeah, I think that's a very big, you know, I've said before, every benefit there's a cost. So the benefit is we have all these things. The cost is we don't necessarily know who's starting where. But that's a good thing. It's more competitive. Um, but I, I would probably be able to less likely predict who's starting exactly on day one here than if we were to go back a year or two where I'd say, okay, we have competition, but this is probably what's going to happen. There is some more that, including offensive line, that I, I don't know that I could tell you and, and be right if I had to predict who was going to start. Juice Wells is a guy who was a, a first-team All-SEC performer at South Carolina. Um, what does he bring to the wide receiver room from a skill set standpoint that wasn't already <clears throat> in the room? And is, is there any worry about keeping everyone happy with all the receiving options? Again, the cost to the benefit, um, you know, of having a lot of receivers. You know, you got to figure that out. But you also got to spend a lot of time getting them to understand the goal, the goal of winning, and that's got to override the individual individual numbers at times, um, because there's not a way where all these guys, tight end, receiver, like they're all going to have these gigantic statistical years. It just can't happen. There's not enough balls. <clears throat> so we spend a lot of time on that. I think Juice has rehabbed really well. Um, he's trained really hard. He seems to be highly competitive at things and really wanting to get better. And so I've been very pleased with Juice. Coach, you've uh, talked openly about Jackson's influence as a leader. Have you been able to identify any defensive players that are taking leadership roles? Mm, I think there's a, there's a lot of – guys on defense. J.J. Pegues probably for sure. Um, really done a great job of as he came back, you know, being a leader, investing in a guy kind of like Jackson. He spends a lot of time with players individually and invests into them. So he'd be the first name that I'd say. Lena, it, you just have to check in on, on Deion Smith. Um, do, do you anticipate him getting here at all? We, we didn't see him today. It's not here today, so <laughs> is is, is maybe. that maybe? <laughs> Playing kind of going off of the top, you know. Obviously, probably the highest expectations have been for this pro program since you've been here. Do you feel like with all those returners and veterans, you've got the right mix of guys who have been around you, kind of help and know how to compartmentalize that kind of stuff if the season kind of goes the right way? Yeah, I think I think that does help. I think that having years with these guys um, does help that. Where if you just had all this preseason hype and you're in year one, maybe even year two, like they haven't been around, so it's like okay, we have these, but then we got to work on this culture part. And so I do think that you know we have a lot of groundwork on that, and it's important to have the guys like Jackson, JJ, like they've been here a while with us, so they know our expectations. They know how we how we think, and then they do the same things in the locker room and in the off-season workouts. What, what's your early thoughts about having more people that are allowed to go on the field and, and, and coach, um, analysts and whatever? Yeah, I think it's probably good. Um, it's like the NFL, which is most of – what college football has leaned to, whether it was rules or now two minute or clock, and um, so you now headset, you know, helmet to helmet or, or coach to helmet, coach to player. Sorry. Um, so it's probably good, you know, that there's no these strange rules that were always around. This guy can hold a card, but he can't really coach the guy. And I mean, just there were some really stupid rules on that if you think about it, you know, and. 
you mentioned my dad. He used to say, like, this is a dumb – when he got to co- back to college football and he was at Tennessee and he'd, like, go down in the offseason to, like, coach the players and then compliance is like, you can't do that. And he's like, that's the dumbest rule I've ever heard. Are you going to tell a doctor he can't help somebody that's in need, you know? And so uh, it's kind of funny when you say that because I remember him – talking about that role and not understanding why if a player wants to get better and comes up and asks you why can only certain coaches in certain time of the year you help them. So it's probably a really good thing. All right, anything else for Coach? All right, thanks, guys.